is, can we live in drought <coughs> conditions and think it's normal? Yeah. Just like the song, just like Rodney was saying, you know, you're laying in bed, you're thirsty, are you going to get up? Or are you just pretty comfortable like that? You know, Oren's sharing how it's difficult, it's very different now that Tony's away, going on a week that she's been away at boot camp, and it's, it's a change because the other part of him is away. Thank God for when he pushes us into those places that causes growth because we don't want to become complacent. Boy, is he raising you to up. <laughs> Just refining the powerful couple you are going to be as you go through this process. Remember, we all go through a process. It's an invitation to a process. And when you say, yeah, we can all be thirsty and we can all be hungry, but can you drink? Do you say, God, I want the process. I want that invitation to your process. So, because we don't want to be complacent. We don't want to not recognize when we're in a drought because we think it's just a normal condition. So let's look at the collective scripture reading numbers 11, 20 through 24 through 25. I have the New King James Version on the count of three, one, two, and three. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tabernacle. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took of the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the 70 elders. And it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied, although they never did so again. And I'm gonna be coming back to this scripture. So do you think Moses was at the well? Yeah. Do you think Moses was able to change the atmosphere? <laughs> yeah. You know, when you sing, the atmosphere is changing now. Amen. How does that happen? Imagine if we all were in the presence of the Lord like Moses and changed the atmosphere to that level. Because you know, we all bring our stuff when we come into this building. It's called life. Sometimes some's baggage is heavier than other times. Sometimes we're in a season where, oh my good night. Sometimes we're going, when does the season end, Lord? But I refuse to believe and settle for the fact that I cannot change that atmosphere because of what I have access to. And that if we collectively all do that together, what could we really open up in here? That's the vision I want you to have for 2019. Because God shares Moses' spirit and it was transferable. So couldn't the opposite be transferable? When I'm carrying something heavy, when I'm acting in my flesh, that can change the atmosphere too. Especially if as a collective body, we're not all as Moses was in that moment. So, you know, when you read in Numbers, there's a journey and there's a dry place, but it's finding an identity. And so I just... I pray and I ask the Lord to give you a new vision for 2019 of ushering in the presence of the Lord. And something that keeps resonating in my spirit is
because the last thing the enemy wants, and I've said this before, is you walking through life with your your eyes wide open knowing who you are in Christ. That's the last thing he wants. But sometimes it's like we have to fight that daily. But we are overcomers and we are victorious. And we're going to believe for it and remember in Genesis 15, 6, Abraham believed the Lord. And guess what? It was credited to him as righteousness. Abraham believed the Lord, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and all will prophesy. Now I'm going to step back and I want to point out something Moses thought when the Lord called him. Exodus 3.11 But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? You must have thought this about yourself with a calling or something the Lord's asked you to do. I know I have many a times. Who am I? But let me ask you to think this thought for a minute. Who are you not? You mean to tell me you are not someone who has complete and total full access to what God has for you? Are you not someone who does not have access to an open heaven? Because sometimes if you're not careful, you can tell yourself that. You can convince yourself that. You can believe that you are not someone who is entitled to the fullness of what God has for you. And that's life and life more abundantly. And that's someone who's an overcomer. And that's someone who's a conqueror. Child of the king. A child of the king. You are a child of the king. You are a masterpiece. A masterpiece is a masterpiece. It's the master's piece. It's the master's piece. So don't disqualify yourself. That's what the enemy wants you to do. To disqualify yourself. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom and to come boldly to the throne of grace. So now I want to break down a little bit further this who am I? Because I really want to get into your thought process. What happens when you start buying into this lie? got a couple of commenta commentaries on this word I've researched. So Moses says, who am I that I should bring? That I, that I should bring? He was, Moses was so satisfied that this was beyond his power. Yeah, anything's beyond my power, Nikki in the flesh, but not beyond. And who am I? Yes, look at who you are, you child of God. So Moses was so satisfied with this, with satisfied that this was beyond his power and all the means that he possessed. That he is astonished 
that even God himself should appoint him to this work. Look at the way he's viewing himself. But it's in humility and there's a difference. I'm going to talk about that. But you know when that thought first comes, it's so slick and clever to just try to chip away at what you're capable of doing through Christ. Such indeed was the bondage of the children of Israel and the power of the people by whom they were enslaved that had not their deliverance come through supernatural means, their escape had been utterly impossible. We have access to supernatural means. Supernatural. Supernatural is what parts an entire sea. I, I can't even fathom that. That a sea parts, and I walk through on dry land. Dry land. Because you wouldn't be able to walk through it just taking the water away. It would be like quicksand. You would still have live sea creatures that could bite you, attack you. They're not instantly dead, but all of it was removed for them to walk across on dry land. Supernatural power. A cloud that guided them. A fire. Supernatural power. We still have access to it. Who am I I am not someone who does not have access to supernatural power. How do you like those apples? There's another commentary. Who am I that I should go? The men most fit for great missions are apt to deem themselves unfit. Don't fall into the trap. Because the last thing the enemy wants is you walking through life with your eyes wide open knowing who you are in Christ. He depends on it. He relies on it. Oh, he's got the non-believers. That's a piece of cake. There's no effort there. It's you he's still after. Because he knows what you can become. Well, he knows what the end result is. He knows where you're going. And you're That's going right. Mm -hmm. Here's another commentary. Who am I? These words indicate humility, and this is the humility of Moses. And in Numbers 12, 3, we read that Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. That's what it tells us in Scripture. Yeah, he feared failure, I'm sure, like a lot of us have feared. But you know what? The Lord didn't give me a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. And how did Jesus combat the enemy when he was on earth? He threw the Father's word at him. The same way I do when I say, uh-uh, I did not get a spirit of fear. Fear. 